there were on several fronts there were uh, shortcomings and today the, what we know is that, that uh, the people who have been booked are uh, uh, the Krishna me uh, English medium school founder Pulwar Palinichami, his wife and school correspondent Saraswati, headmistress Santa Lakshmi and all of them have been uh, you know, booked under 304 of the IPC which says that it is punishment for culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, this particular school had a strength of 700 students and uh, to the trial of this particularly started oh, only way back uh, in uh, uh, to, uh, on uh, to around uh, uh, 16th uh, this particular disaster happened the trial happened on september 24 2012 and uh, there were around 488 witnesses and this included 18 children uh, who had been witness to the entire problem so there was a reliving of trauma for the children also uh, with regards to the disaster and the trial in the case has concluded uh, in july 17th and uh, now the verdict has come out and the quantum of punishment says that uh, the owner gets uh, 10 years while the principal of the school gets a lifer but uh, this is coming after 10 years and uh, this particular incident had in fact uh, shocked the entire education system in uh, Tamil Nadu there were ad hoc committees that had to be set up to look into the safety of children especially with regards to fire safety and any other disaster that could have occurred in the school premises what is the measures that have been taken and it also attracted a lot of media attention uh, in 2004 but uh, this disaster uh, is quite late but uh, there are mixed reaction coming uh, from the parents with regards to the verdict, uh, Akshita. Right, Burgess, if you could once again highlight uh, the kind of punishment that has been meted out and why exactly 11 people were acquitted. Well, uh, what happened was the trial started way back in uh, September 24, 2012. Now, there are 488 witnesses that had to be examined, which included 18 children. Now, uh, there was a meticulous effort that was uh, taken on the part of the uh, investigating officers to compare it with the commissioned report that was submitted by Justice K. Sampath. And also, it was a lot of... Uh, uh, problems with regards to children because uh, most of the children who had to depose as witnesses had to reel through the trauma so they had to be uh, uh, they had to be interviewed over a long uh, period uh, and this in fact uh, made the case to go further the investigations in fact uh, made it uh, made the case to be prolonged for long and then what we know is that uh, today uh, there's been a verdict as both of uh, the owner of the school has been uh, booked as well as the principal the owner gets 10 years and while the principal gets a lifer and both of them have have been uh, booked under Section 304 of the IPC, uh, which is punishment for culpable homicide and not amounting to murder. So uh, this is the quantum of punishment that has been given by the Tanjavur Sessions Court. And uh, at, there were at least uh, some uh, scenes of uh, uh, emotion from parents who had been there, but uh, they were not ready to speak to the media. But some uh, found it uh, too late uh, because this incident had occurred 10 years ago. So there's a lot of mixed reactions on the side of the parents, Akshita. Right, uh, Burgess. Thank you so much for joining us with uh, all those details. And, uh, of course, we understand that the maximum punishment has been given out to the principal, which is a life sentence, as well as a fine of 47 lakh rupees. And in a natural disaster, at least 15 people are feared dead at the Ambe village in Pune. Reportedly, over 150 people are trapped under the debris. The Pune District Magistrate stated that at least 45 houses have been buried in the landslide. Two National Disaster Response Force teams comprising of 80 members have rushed to Ambe village landslide site to carry out the rescue operations. Meanwhile, there is fear of more landslides in the nearby villages. The Ambe village is said to be one of uh, is said to be a remote one with very poor connectivity. Nearly 50 villages in the Thane district were cut off from the Thessal headquarters and two bridges remain submerged as heavy rains continue to lash the area today. And uh, around 150 villages along the Surya River in Palgar Taluk have been put on alert this morning for discharge of water from a dam in the river. And uh, it is understood that it is because of this that there's a warning given the Surya River is swelling and over 150 villages along its banks have lost contact with the outside world. And of course, rescue operations are on full swing for this particular landslide. It took place in a Malin village in Ambegon Thessil. It's what we understand. It happened at about 5 a.m. in the morning due to the heavy downpour. And of course, now NDRF personnel are currently present there and are conducting rescue operations. Uh, it is understood that over 15 people are feared dead and over 50 people are feared trapped under the debris, including children.
and Galata was witnessed in the Lok Sabha over the alleged police action against Marathi people in Belagavi. Karnataka and Maharashtra MPs indulged in a war of words. Shiv Sena saw Arvind Sav and the urge to the centre to make Belagavi a union territory. Bharwada MP from BJP, Prala Joshi, countered Savant and said Belagavi is an integral part of Karnataka. My colleague Arun joins us over the phone lines with more details. Arun, over the last few days, we've seen an uproar over what's been happening in Belagavi with the Shiv Sena also reacting. It looks like it's been a war of words at the Lok Sabha as well. That's right, Akshita. This was only about to happen and that has happened. Remember, as we speak, the situation in Yellur village, the bone of controversy, uh, is limping back to normalcy. But still, uh, the echoes of what has happened during the weekend have hit the parliament. And that's the reason why the uh, Shiv Sena MP uh, went, uh, Samant went hammer and tongs at uh, the at the Congress government in the state uh, saying that uh, uh, Yellur is a part of Maharashtra but it has uh, become a part of uh, Karnataka. In fact, um, uh, that was countered by the BJP MP uh, from uh, Dharwa, Prahla Joshi, who went on to say that as long as the moon and uh, sun are in existence, uh, Yellur will be a part of Karnataka. But clearly, uh, the last word as far as this controversy is concerned has not yet been spoken. In fact, a delegation of BJP slash uh, Shiv Sena MPs have gone and met up with uh, uh, Rajnath Singh, the Union Home Minister. We are given to believe that Rajnath Singh first said that uh, violence should be shunned. So clearly, there is now a lot of pressure building on the government because the government is being asked by different parties to have the uh, uh, Justice Mahajan Committee report uh, implemented. The Justice Mahajan Committee report, uh, if you know, uh, Akshita, is the report relating to border uh, issues being resolved and numerous such um, uh, border issues or border disputes uh, persist as far as uh, India is concerned, particularly uh, like, with, uh, like with Kerala and Karnataka over the issue of Kasargod and uh, Belagam as far as uh, Maharashtra is concerned. So clearly, while the MPs have been insisting on an early implementation of the Justice Mahajan Committee report, it, believe, it looks like at this point of time the BJP wants to broker peace between the two states, wants to ensure that uh, peace returns back to Yellow before anything productive could be taken up, uh, Akshita. Right, uh, Arun. Also, if you could highlight what were the kind of arguments that broke out in uh, the Lok Sabha, who were the leaders who were involved in the same? It is largely uh, an issue which died out, thankfully enough, because of the Nitin Gadkari bugging issue. So as such, uh, there was only a few isolated voices. Savant of uh, Shiv Sena was one of them and that was countered by... Uh, uh, Prahala Joshi from the BJP, but clearly uh, the undertone is very uh, tense as far as Yellow Village is concerned. Remember, the district administration is doing its level best to ensure that uh, uh, the uh, situation, fragile peace that is existent, doesn't actually uh, slip away, uh, Akshita. Right, uh, Arun, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. <laughs> And while Chief Minister Sidramaya will expand his cabinet soon, the Chief Minister has decided to do so as four ministerial berths still are lying vacant. He will reportedly hold a discussion with the Congress High Command and then arrive at a decision on who to take in his cabinet. Well, uh, the Chief Minister has made it uh, clear that uh, as of now, the expansion will take place in some time from now. He has been hinting at it for quite some time now. And, of course, uh, as expected, he is expected to do the same in a matter of time after consultations with the Congress High Command. There are four ministerial births uh, vacant as of now. And that is why the Chief Minister will be speaking to Sonia Gandhi and the likes to decide exactly who will be a part of the Cabinet. 
Protests have erupted against self-proclaimed Godman Nithinanda outside his Bidadi ashram. Protesters are demanding his arrest after the CGM court issued a non-bailable warrant against him in the potency case after he failed to appear before court. And meanwhile, of course, even as uh, the protests escalate, we are looking at uh, the CID also knocking at uh, Nityananda's ashram. Uh, in fact, uh, it is understood that they went ahead and served uh, that official notice that uh, this, uh, uh, that uh, in fact, uh, the CGM court has issued a non bailable warrant to Nityananda. The protests, of course, were largely due to the fact uh, that uh, Nityananda made a statement that the protesters were being paid 100 rupees uh, per hour to stage a protest outside his ashram. And soon after, of course, today, once these protests broke out. Uh, Nitinanda's ashram came out clarification saying that the statement was made about his childhood and an experience so far. And moving on, the Karnataka Film Chamber will not be participating in the Bengaluru Bandh, even as the city police is gearing up for tomorrow's Bandh called for by pro Canada organizations. Meanwhile, 68 Canada pro organizations have called for a bond tomorrow. HAL will remain closed tomorrow and the employees will instead be working on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Private Schools Association has now decided not to back the bond. They have left it to the choice of each school. Home Minister KJ George has instructed the police to maintain a tight vigil and ensure that the bond passes off peacefully and the public property is not damaged. Protesters who indulge in violence will be arrested and booked under the Gunda Act. Senior police officials, including City Commissioner M. N. Reddy and additional Commissioner Alok Kumar, besides ADGP Kishore Chandra, have been appraised by the government on the need to ensure that commoners are not put to any hardship. In view of the proposed band uh, in uh, Bangalore City tomorrow, uh, we have uh, taken all the necessary uh, preparatory uh, uh, measures in terms of uh, mobilizing maximum amount of force, both the civil force as well as the armed force from the city police, as also the home guards, probably nearly a thousand home guards should be on duty tomorrow. Apart from that, we are also getting uh, two companies of Central Reserve uh, Forces. Uh, we have uh, uh, alerted our intelligence units to collect information on any potential problems that may be created. We expect that we will be able to handle the uh, ban the day tomorrow fairly well. And uh, my colleague uh, Bansi was at the Commissioner's office earlier. He takes us through the kind of security arrangements that are being planned for tomorrow. This is the Police Commissioner's office and the officers are getting ready for tomorrow's Bengaluru Band. Here, the police have made special arrangements to deploy home guards and other specialized units across the city. Let's remember that uh, at yesterday's Eid celebrations, many of these units were used. So therefore, these units are again going to be deployed for uh, the purpose of the Bandobast arrangements across the city tomorrow. So you see the home guards and other units uh, who are, who are uh, th this is this is what they call the routine roll call and uh, they are calling, calling their names and uh, the officers taking stock of how many men they have of course a large number of women also are, are being deployed about 1000 uh, persons who are in the home guards are going to be deployed for this in preparation for tomorrow's Bengaluru Band how effective will it be is the big question. With camera person Murthy, this is Bansi for News 9.